news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas as far as Antioch. Antioch. <laughs> when he came and he had seen the grace of God, he was glad, and encouraged them all with purpose of heart that they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added unto the Lord. Acts 11, verses 22 through 24. So who is this Barnabas that's so highly mentioned in the scripture? Barnabas was a Levite from the island of Cyprus. He was originally named Joseph, but the disciples named him with a name that identified him most by his most important characteristic. Barnabas was an encourager. Barnabas was also the man that encouraged Christians to accept Saul of Tarsus, who had previously been a persecutor of Christians. Just like Nehemiah in the Old Testament, we know first and foremost that Barnabas was an encourager. But the Bible also tells us that Barnabas was a glad man. Acts 11 says that he was glad because he saw the goodness of God at work in the church of Antioch. You know, we can learn a lesson from this. Instead of focusing on the bad things that are happening in our church, we can focus on the good things and help build our churches. <coughs> Barnabas also had a purpose. What was Barnabas' purpose in encouraging the new church at Antioch? To continue with the Lord. God started work in this Gentile church, and Barnabas' purpose was to continue that work and help build up the church. In fact, when he saw what God was doing, he brought Paul to Antioch, and they stayed there for a year, teaching and growing this new church. What was the result? A great many people were saved, and it was here at Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Do we have a purpose in our heart to continue the work of Christ? Are we willing to go and get someone and bring them to help carry out that purpose, even if the person is a very unlikely candidate like the Apostle Paul? Barnabas was a good man. Barnabas lived a Christ-like life, as Luke, the writer of Acts, penned, for he was a good man. He was affirming that Barnabas had and lived a morally pure life. That's not to say that Barnabas never sinned. We all do. But his reputation was one that identified him as a man that lived in obedience. He was also a man that did the right thing. In Acts 4, he sold his property, and he gave money to help the poor saints and help relieve them of their suffering. He always found ways to build up and encourage others, and he was obedient to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, even when the instructions were to take a previous Christian persecutor, converted Christian, under his wing. After Barnabas' appearance in Acts, he isn't mentioned again. However, Paul goes and does great things and mighty works, including writing the numerous books in the New Testament that we read today in our Bibles. Barnabas had faith in God. He didn't have a wavering faith. Barnabas didn't only have faith when things were going good. He had a deep faith in God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh must believe it that he is, and he is the rewarder of them. Then diligently seek him. Barnabas was full of faith. He believed and obeyed the gospel. He acknowledged that Jesus was his Lord and lived in obedience to him. Not only did Barnabas had faith in God, but Barnabas had faith in others as well. Barnabas had faith in his brothers and sisters in Christ. Everyone else would have shunned Saul, but Barnabas took him under his wing. He listened to Saul's conversion experience. He also listened to the Holy Spirit who prompted him to go and get Paul and bring him to help the church at Antioch. Paul wasn't the only convert that Barnabas had faith in. John Mark was Barnabas's cousin. And on the first missionary journey, they took John Mark with them. But as soon as they reached Perga, John Mark turned around and went home. On the second missionary journey, Barnabas did not give up on John Mark, and he wanted to take him with them again. But Paul refused. Still, Barnabas did not give up on John Mark. Instead, Paul and Silas went one way, and John Mark and Barnabas went the other. We know that Barnabas continued encouraging and training John Mark, because later, Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4.11, Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Paul gave up on him, but Barnabas did not. And now Paul says that John Mark is useful to him for ministry. Barnabas is just so similar to Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Because of Nehemiah's encouraging spirit and determination, the people were able to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and overcome their enemies. He told the Israelites, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. 
And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. Nehemiah 4, verses 13 through 15. The Bible is just full of people who were encouragers and still are today through his word. There are two questions that I'd like to leave you with today. First, Barnabas is known by his most important characteristic trait, or character trait, that of being an encourager. What would our names be if we were named by our strongest characteristic? And then finally, someone today is hurting. Someone is ready to give up. There is someone that is questioning God and just doesn't understand. So who will be a Barnabas today? Who will rise up and help them build their encouragement? Thank you.